परिजन सहित कृष्ण चैतन्य देव श्री राधा कृष्ण पादृता श्री विशाखानुता ओम अज्ञान दिवरांध से ज्ञानांजन श्लाकया अक्षरुन्मृत तस्म श्री गुरव नम नाम श्रेष्ठ मनोपुत्र स्वूप रूपम तस्गजरी माथुरी गोष्ठवाट्यम राधा कुंडम गिरीवर महो राधिका माधवाश प्राप्त यतृपया श्री गुरु तम नोस्मी नमस्ते गुरुदेव Hare Krishna Maharaj Dhanavad Pranam Hare Krishna Maharaj we can't hear you Hare Krishna Maharaj Something is wrong with his internet He left um and bhagavad gita is the essence of all the scriptures so sarvopanishado ka avo dukdha gopal nandan ha partho vatsa sudir bhukta dukdham gita amritam mahat so this bhagavad gita is the essence of all the vedic scriptures so we'll read verse number 334 as it has been designated today इंद्रिय सेन्द्रिय सार्थे रागद्वेशौ व्यवस्थितौ तयोर्न वशम आगच्छे तौ हि अस्य परिपंथिनौ इंद्रियस्य ऑफ द सेंसेस इंद्रियस्य अर्थे इन द सेंस ऑब्जेक्ट्स सो बेसिकली देयर आर फाइव वर्किंग सेंसेस एंड फाइव नॉलेज एक्वायरिंग सेंसेस एंड देयर एक्चुअली देयर आर सेंस ऑब्जेक्ट्स आल्सो राइट so for example by eyes um i want to see some nice sight huh? that is a sense object huh? so like that <clears throat> so indriyasya of the senses indriyasya arthe in the sense objects rag attachment huh? so basically there is a rag and dvesh huh? there is attachment and there is detachment huh? so this is uh, the duality in this material world huh? rag dvesh huh? raga means attachment and dvesha means uh, detachment or like and dislike huh? so raga and dvesha these are the two things which are very common in this world uh, raga dvesha but bhagwan will further tell us uh, has already told us in chapter 2 shlok number 64 raga dvesha vimuktaistu vishayan indriya charan atma vashir vidheyatma prasadam adigachita A man of controlled senses, however, who is free from attachment and aversion, attains happiness of mind even while enjoying various objects through his senses. So, um, sthita prakya, one whose consciousness is fixed. Uh, what is his nature? Person in equanimity. So, Bhagwan he told that um, the mind cannot directly accept sense objects. There is no fault in accepting sense objects with controlled senses. so our mind develops a desire to enjoy sense objects but mind cannot enjoy by itself it needs help of senses um so vidhyatma means one who whose atma is fixed in the instructions of bhagwan 
Prasadam adhikachati implies that there is no fault if such qualified person accepts sense objects. Rather, it is especially, rather it is specifically to their credit because they see that everything is related to Bhagavan. One who is the pragya may or may not give up sense objects or may or may not be motivated to attend them. In any case, everything is auspicious for him. Like the devotee, uh, many like the devotee like say Yudhishthir Maharaj. What difference does it make he enters household life or becomes a sannyasi? It doesn't make any difference. Because either way he's a perfect devotee. Uh, he will keep on performing his devotional service in household life, also in sannyas life. Uh, even when the external senses are controlled by keeping them aloof from the sense objects, the mind does not stop thinking of them. And that is a problem. Many times we see that um, we try to um, stop thinking of the sense objects. But they just don't go from our mind. Huh? So such a renunciation is called falgu, useless, or market of Iraq, or monkey renunciation. This is stated in Gita 3.6. Karmendriyani sayyam me yaste manasa smara indriyarthan imudatma mithya chara sadhuchyate. When a sadhaka practices appropriate renunciation, yukta vairagya, and worships Sri Bhagavan, he can control his mind and absorb it in thinking of his worshipful deity. When he has reached such a stage, there is no fault in accepting those sense objects which are favorable to his practice and rejecting those which are unfavorable. Huh? So there is always going to be raga and dvesha. Huh? <clears throat> so basically, <clears throat> we have the anarthas, huh? as we studied in uh, <clears throat> that we are, we are studying Madhuri Kadamina, Dushkruta Tanarthas, the Anarthas arising from past sinful activities, refer to five types of klesha or distress, which are avidya, ignorance or forgetfulness of Krishna, asmita, the false egoism, arising from the conceptions of I and mind in relation to the material body, raga, attachment for the objects of sense gratification, and dvesha, hatred or aversion to unpleasant, disagreeable, or adverse situations, and dur. Abhinivesh, attachment or uh, attachment for or absorption in sinful activities. Right? <clears throat> so basically, um, due to our past sinful activities only, we develop attachment for something and uh, hatred or aversion or feeling uh, unpleasant or disagreeable or adverse situation. Huh? I give an example that, you know, in India, when we are children, actually we are not having any septic toilets. We are having these toilets where, you know, <clears throat> not septic toilet. There was no septic tank. So as a result, um, it was um, it, it was st stench was, was unbearable many times. Huh? With all the stool, you could see worms crawling in that, you know, maggot and all that. And, you know, literally I grew with that, you know, because that was very rare to have septic toilets when I was growing up. And imagine Gaurkishal Babaji Maharaj. He was um, chanting Harina right there in the toilet. Uh, he was chanting there and Bhakti Pragya and Kesha Goswami Maharaj went to see him uh, and uh, then only opened the door. Uh, but he said the stench uh, um, of the stool is better than the stench uh, of the materialistic people. Uh. Shila Gurudeva recounts that, you know, on one occasion Shila Gorkishore, wary of materialistic company, locked himself in a latrine of a public dharmashala, rest house in Kulia and began to perform bhajan. He found this stinking place conducive for bhajan and he preferred the stench of the toilet to the association of materialist. People wondered <clears throat> where the Babaji had gone. After two or three days, the sweeper woman arrived. As she was cleaning the stool under the latrine, she heard a tender voice filled with intense longing, chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Glancing upwards, she was astonished to see Srila Babaji Maharaj fully absorbed in chanting Hare Ram. He was not aware of his body or of the bad smell. The sweeper woman immediately told the chairman of the municipality and the news soon reached the ears of the district authorities, the police president and others. Everyone came to Srila Babaji Maharaj and repeatedly requested him to come out of the latrine. Babaji Maharaj, they pleaded, We have arranged a bhajan kutir for you on the banks of the Bhagavati 
Bhagavati Ganga. Please go there and perform bhajan. But Babaji Maharaj did not pay any attention to their talk and went on with his ceaseless chanting of Harinam. To the incessant request of the high officials, Srila Babaji Maharaj only replied in a feeble voice, I am unhealthy and I am unable to open the door. You see that um, he is completely free from raga and dvesha. Huh? He is only attached to bhajan. Huh? So that is the thing. Huh? So we should also be attached to bhajan like Gorkhisa Babaji Maharaj. But due to our past sinful activities, we have attachment for the objects of sense, gratification and dvesha, hatred or aversion to unpleasant, disagreeable or adverse situation. Huh? So these are all anarthas. Huh? And basically, obviously, there is also attachment to Krishna, right? One time Narad Muni was talking to Maharaj Yudhishthir. And he told, Oh Maharaj Yudhishthir, there are two kinds of absorption in Sri Krishna. One is called Raga, strong attachment. And the other is Dvesha, envy. In this connection, Raga is favorable absorption, whereas envy, anger and fear are unfavorable. Kama, transcendental lust, Sneha, transcendental affection and Samanda, a family relation are favorable and they are called raga. Envy is opposite to raga, although it is also absorption of the heart and mind. Envy denotes I'll kill him. So, um, you like Shishupal, you know, he had attachment, he had also uh, dvesha for Krishna, envy, Shishupal, uh, Kaunsa, Shishupal. So, they were also attached to Krishna, but in a contrary mood to kill him. Uh, so, Gopya Kama Bhayat Kaunso Dvesha Chaitya Tayon Rupa Samanda Dvrishna Yasriya Dhyam Bhakta Vayam Vivo. My dear King Girishthir, the gopis by their lusty desires, Kaunso by his fear, Shishupan and other kings by envy, the Yadus by their familial relationship with Krishna, you Pandavas by your great affection for Krishna, and we the general devotees by our devotional service. Uh, have obtained the mercy of Krishna. So basically there is Raga. Huh? Kaunsa's fear also was Ragami. In general, all these six are Ragami, full absorption in Sri Krishna. Raga means actually full absorption in Sri Krishna or sense objects. But we have to take our mind away from sense objects, full absorption in sense objects, and be fully absorbed in Krishna. Huh? Then that rag is good. For Shishupal and Dantavakra were also like that. They were also doing Ragamai attachment. But um, Kaunsa was totally absorbed in Krishna out of fear, day and night, while he was slept. He was always dreaming about Krishna. He was always afraid, thinking, when Krishna comes, and I will kill him. So, Kaunsa attained complete absorption by fear. Shishupal out of envy and the Vrishni dynasty, uh, the other was by Samman, the family relation. The members of the Vrishni dynasty considered Krishna as their brothers, her son, grandfather or uncle, all the Yadavas thought um, in those ways and their wives were also in the those relationships. Sri Narad Muni also cited the example of the Pandavas who had both Samanda and Sneha, affection, a very high class Sneha. So basically here you can see attachment and aversion to Sri Krishna. Uh, that is also seen here. Uh, so we should be attached to Sri Krishna in favorable mood. Uh, so here it is told that rag attachment, dvesha and so detachment, vavasthito, put under regulations, tayo na never, vasham control, agachet, one should come, tau those, he certainly, asya, he, he is, paripanthe, now stumbling blocks. Attraction and repulsion for sense objects are felt by embodied beings, but one should not fall under the control of senses and sense objects because they are stumbling blocks on the path of self-realization. Those around Krishna consciousness are naturally reluctant to engage in material sense gratification. But those who are not in such consciousness should follow the rules and regulations of the revealed scriptures. Unrestricted sense enjoyment is the cause of material engagement. But one who follows the rules and regulations of the revealed scriptures does not become entangled by the sense objects. For example, sex enjoyment is a necessity for the conditioned soul. And sex enjoyment is allowed under the license of marriage ties. For example, according to scriptural injunctions, 
one is forbidden to engage in sex relationships with any woman other than one's wife all other women are to be considered as one's mother but in spite of such injunctions a man is still inclined to have sex relations with other women these propensities are to be curbed otherwise there will be stumbling blocks on the path of self realization as long as the material body is there the necessities of the material body are allowed but under the rules and regulations and yet we should not rely upon the control of such allowance one has to follow those rules and regulations and attach to them because practice of self gratifications and regulations may also lead one to go astray as much as there is always the chance of an accident even on the wrong roads although they may be very carefully maintained no one can guarantee that there will be no danger even on the safest road the sense enjoyment spirit has been current a has been current a very long long time owing to material association therefore in spite of regulated sense enjoyment there is every chance of falling down therefore any attachment for regulated sense enjoyment must also be avoided by all means but action in the loving service of krishna detaches one from all kinds of sensory activities therefore no one should try to be detached from krishna consciousness at any stage of life the whole purpose of detachment from all kinds of sense enjoyment is ultimately to become situated on the platform of krishna consciousness <clears throat> actually uh, <laughs> i saw one article actually that baba ramdev the yoga guru and his assistant is part of actually bal krishna acharya bal krishna they gave sanyas diksha brahmachari diksha to many many young women and men and recruited them as from brahmachari and brahmachari is um, so they took a vow of lifelong celibacy it's a very difficult vow i must agree huh? but then then i thought in the mind that you know what is the aim and object of following such a hard vow what are they going to gain by it uh, means really um, is there any benefit in following their uh, whatever views they have arya samaj or what views they have what is the aim and object if there is no bhakti uh, if they are going to do unalloyed devotion service to sri krishna oh that's just fine that they then no harm uh, uh, but um, if you are not going to do krishna bhakti uh, i would rather say that the krishna conscious householders are better off than the non devotee uh, brahmacharis and brahmacharinis uh, because it is simply waste of time otherwise uh, if you are not doing bhakti and still simply following brahmacharya or hard austerities um, so <clears throat> the whole purpose of brahmacharya is to um, the whole purpose is just to become krishna conscious huh? it helps us in krishna consciousness otherwise no purpose so indriya syandriya artha sarthe raga dvesho vyavasthito tayor na vasham agachet tau hi asya paripankito indriya syandriya sarthe of each sense indriya syarthi within each sense object raga attachment means every sense is attached to that corresponding sense object eyes are attached to very beautiful sight nose is attached to very good fragrance tongue is attached to good taste touch is attached to some soft object so dvesham aversion evasthito are situated tayoh by them no not vasham control agachita should become tau te attachment and aversion he certainly as for him the spiritual practitioner paripanthi no obstacles all the senses are helplessly controlled by one's attachment and aversion to their respective objects therefore one should never come under their sway because such attachment and aversion are impediments for the sadhakas progress upon the path of auspiciousness it is not possible for 
spiritual to force injunctions upon a person whose nature is extremely wicked. So here you see that some people they are very wicked. So then it is very difficult for scriptures to control them. The scriptures cannot control them very easily. Therefore, as long as the feelings of unhappiness resulting from performance of sinful action have not arisen, a person should not allow his senses to wander willfully. Suppose I do some sinful activity, then I must feel remorse, I must lament, called Pashyata. So one should try to control one's senses. Shri Bhagwan is speaking this verse beginning with Indriyasya Indriyasya to explain this. The repetition of the word Indriya here indicates that the sense objects of each respective senses. Although to look at another's wife, touch her or allure her by giving her gifts is forbidden in scripture. An immoral man is still attracted to doing so. So that this is now very much common actually. Uh, and they will simply try to attract uh, someone else's wife. Try to touch her, try to allure her by giving gifts. But this is actually the most sinful activity. And uh, most of the murders uh, and uh, suicides and uh, uh, divorces, broken families, they are caused by this type of attraction for someone else's wife or someone else's husband. Huh? So actually, you'll see that this is uh, newspaper is replete with the news how. This caused havoc in so many lives. Um, on the other hand, although it is prescribed in scripture to see, touch, serve, and offer charity to the Guru, Brahmanas, holy places, and guests, an impious man is averse to such behavior. Actually, you are supposed to see what you are supposed to see the spiritual master. You are supposed to touch his feet or Vaishnava's feet. Obviously, if they don't want, then you don't touch it. You pranam from far away. But you are supposed to serve your spiritual master, brahmanas, holy places, and guests. You must serve them. You must offer charity to them, to Gurudev, brahmanas, guests, atithis, and holy places. But an impious man is averse to such behavior. An impious man will be attracted to someone else's wife. He will try to buy her gifts. He will try to look at her, he will try to touch her, embrace her, uh, but he will not try to embrace devotees. He will not try to offer gifts to Guru. Mm. So they don't do what is beneficial for their soul, but they try to do what is beneficial for their immediate sense gratification. This is the thing. Uh, to come under the influence of either of these mentalities is not proper. Uh. So you'll see that um, you are supposed to give charity to the holy, you are supposed to visit the holy places. Uh, but these days, you know, there is a fashion actually. You somehow or the other, you um, take someone else's wife, take it to a hotel secretly, and then you get caught, and then the husband will chastise him, and then you chastise him back. There's fight, public fight. Uh, so this is what is going on now. Mm. And uh, <clears throat> now people are so scared that my wife may be having an affair with someone else. They put a GPS in their car, so they know where their car was gone in their absence. They put CC television and they put recorders and whatnot in their mobile phones. No one trusts anyone in this society. There are actually snooping devices everywhere in the house. Because the husband doesn't trust the wife and wife doesn't trust the husband either way. Understand. It is due to lack of Krishna consciousness. It's a heightened. Uh, this is now this um, severe actually this situation now. And uh, add to it the now <coughs> unjustified uh, uh, living relationship between boy and girl uh, without marriage. That adds to another level of problems. So that the. The society, uh, the, the, the wedding, and uh, that marriage institution is so weak now. So, to come under the influence of either of these mentalities is not proper. In other words, it is not proper either to develop attachment to a woman by seeing her or to be malicious to someone who obstructs that attachment. 
So I should not develop an attachment. So first, don't look at a woman. If you see a beautiful woman, just turn your head away. Understand? Uh, not I am saying that women are bad as such. But because they are very attractive, and if she is not your wife, you have no business staring at her. What point makes you stare at your uh, someone who is not your wife either way? To make her uneasy also. Uh, so we should not again and again look. Once you see her, it's fine. Or maybe you should look upon her as like a sister or daughter or like a mother. With that feeling, you can look at her, but not with the mood of enjoyment. Uh, but then what is the person? Someone, we fall in love with some woman and then someone obstructs that attachment. Then we try to eliminate him, uh, that person, eliminate him or her, who's causing our obstruction to our meeting with that woman who, with whom we want a illicit connection. Similarly, an aspirant on the path of self realization should never be attached to rich and palatable foodstuffs that are to his taste or not ever to try unpalatable food items and subjects that are not to his taste. So basically, the whole point is actually, oh, I'm going to that particular restaurant because it has very good food. Hmm. I will go to Govinda's restaurant in Iskon Chopati. Oh, Iskon Bangalore, they have very good restaurant, you know, Pashadam restaurant. Oh, very good. 200 rupees, unlimited we can eat. And you know, ah, fabulous. How about going to Gauriya Mat? Uh, oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, nothing, you know, not enough oil they put and this and that. You know. So, what is this? This is actually, we are attached to rich and palatable foodstuffs, which put pressure on our belly. First, Eating palatable foodstuff by our tongue puts pressure on our belly and then our genitals. If you cannot control tongue, you cannot control your belly and you cannot control your genitals. Mm. So we should, uh, uh, you know, uh, Nil Prabhu always says, Rukha Sukha Khao or Kaam Kojito. Mm. But these days, uh, there is so much attraction for palatable foodstuffs. Mm. There is actually on YouTuber, Mr. Chajed, uh, is talking about heart. Actually, how to reverse heart condition without putting strains or putting some uh, or open open heart surgery and whatnot, you know. So he's telling that uh, what is better for you, rice, polished rice or uh, chipped rice. Chipped rice means poha, poha or it is called chidwa, chidwa, chivda, either way. He's telling that that polished rice is not so good because it is devoid of all the nutrients. But chipped rice uh, uh, is much better because they actually boil the rice with the husk and then they remove the husk by pounding. So it is not polished, so it is better he was telling like that. Anyways, so the point I am trying to make is that um, we should try to take wholesome food mm. offered to Lord Krishna, uh, not over processed uh, and uh, and there are some drinks actually, they are very tasty. Mm. I give an example of one drink called Epi. I personally used to like it a lot because it is highly carbonated, highly uh, high content, sugar content, that Epi. Mm. And uh, frizz and something like this. And uh, it's very tasty, obviously. Uh, I personally used to like the taste of it. But then I read that. It has so much sugar in it, which is the ultra processed food, not good for you at all. So I stopped it actually. Um, and there are preservatives in those foodstuffs. Those preservatives, uh, they increase the shelf life of those foodstuffs, but they decrease your lifespan. <laughs> so, so we should try to take wholesome food, fresh food offered to Krishna. It may be simple and uh, honor it. There was one Maharaj actually, he used to mix all the prasadam items and then he used to not worry that I will be attached to this particular taste, sweet or bitter, sour, or salty, no. He should mix all prasad. He said, I should not be attached to any taste. I should be only attached to prasadam. Uh, it is a food stuff offered to Krishna. Mm. We should be like that. So, Similarly, an aspirant on the path of self-realization should neither be attached to rich and palatable foodstuffs that are to his taste or not averse to dry. 
So actually, I was um, reading. Actually, Shri Gurudev's personal library has been put on the net. Uh, Shri Gurudev's books uh, in his library, yeah? because you know that third floor of Keshaji Gaudiya Math, the old building is now gone. Now they are constructing a new building there. But I remember he had a big library there uh, in his room. And there, actually, they scanned his Ramayana, Hindi Ramayana. I found a very good version of Ramayana. It's to be downloaded on purevarsi.com. And I was reading that uh, churning of the ocean took place. And churning of the ocean, uh, some heavenly damsels appeared from that churning. And there were Apsara. And now the, the etymological uh, meaning of that is given uh, in Ramayana. That etymological meaning they are telling that um, upper means water. Hmm. Upper means um, water, and the heavenly damsels emanated from water. They were called apsara. Apsara. Huh. Then also one particular uh, varuni beverage. It came out of that, uh, and demigods accepted that varuni. So in Sanskrit, the liquor is called sura, sura, and Demigods accepted that wine, that Varuni beverage, intoxicating beverage called Varuni, and demons didn't accept it. So, Sura means liquor. So, a Sura means who did not accept that liquor, and Sura means accepted that liquor. So, I found, you know, very wonderful actually that, uh, you know, everything has a meaning in Sanskrit. Huh? So, I just read it for five minutes on Ram Nomi day and I was surprised. Huh? It was telling that how this, when churning of the milk ocean took place, where the poison came from. And Ramayana says that it came because of, from the mouth of uh, that uh, Vasuki, who was made into the rope for churning the milk ocean. And Lord Shiva drank that uh, poison. Some of that poison fell on the ground and the snakes and scorpions drank that. Um, so the whole point actually I'm trying to make is that um, uh, these books actually uh, we should not be attached to good foodstuffs, very palatable foodstuffs. Uh, last year, especially, it was very bad for the cows. Uh, our Indian breed of cows actually uh, <clears throat> developed uh, a serious disease, actually, called a lumpy skin disease. And they had sores all over the body. <clears throat> and as a result, they were suffering like anything. Many cows lived, left the body. Uh, there was one Goshala called Patveda Goshala in uh, Rajasthan. I think lakhs and lakhs of cows are there. Huh? Um, and there is one Maharaj in Tatta Sharanandri Maharaj. Huh? Um, and he actually was crying for many days because the cows were dying. And Shipat Dandi Maharaj also ceaselessly, um, ceaselessly was uh, working for the cows. Uh, ceaselessly um, uh, working for the cows. Our cows also, some of our cows in Hesarkat also developed this uh, skin mad cow, uh, this lumpy skin disease actually. Mm. Um, but one sadhu had a realization. He said that you take, a, you take some water in a pot and keep it in front of the deity of Hanuman and uh, or if you don't have Hanuman, you can put in the picture of Anuman and light a lamp and chant any mantra like Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, or you can chant Sri Ram, Jai Ram, Jai Jai Ram, which is a Vijay mantra for the devotees of Ram Chandra. Uh, so, name of God should be chanted for one hour, two hours, and then that water is sanctified now. If you get Ganges water, it is very good if you keep in front of Anuman, otherwise, you can take any water, any clean water. And chant two hours mantra and then sprinkle that water on the cows. And he had the realization that if you sprinkle that water on the cows, that lumpy skin disease will go away. Mm. But it was a very dangerous disease. Uh, so uh, the holy name has power in it. Uh, so here, <clears throat> similarly, an aspirant on the path of self realization should neither be attached to rich and palatable foodstuffs. That are too, uh, to his taste or 
nor ever stood dry, unpalatable foodstuffs and objects that are not to his taste. In the same way, he should not be attached to seeing and hearing about his own son. Uh, nor should he be adverse to uh, see and hearing about his son's enemy's son. So generally, we like our son very much. Uh, there is um, attachment for son. You might have heard the story of uh, Vivanda Rushi. Uh, Vivanda, he was a uh, great sage. Um, and uh, he was... Uh, having a son by the name Rusha Shranga and he wanted him to make him Brahmachari uh, but uh, somehow the other he couldn't remain Brahmachari eh? so he was very attached to his son eh? um, so generally we are also attached to our sons eh? but we don't want to hear about someone else eh? um, for example we hear that there was an accident in the school and then we are immediately very scared. Oh, what happened? Is it my son who was hurt in that accident? And if the news comes that it was not my son, then it was someone else's son or my enemy's son, then maybe sometimes some happiness may also come in our heart. Oh, good. My enemy's son was hurt. Good. We should not be like that. We should have equal love for our son and also enemy's son. We should see both of them on spiritual platform. Understand? And we should love everyone's son. And we should not hate anyone. Understand? We should not have, actually we should not have so much attachment for one son also. Because if you have attachment for your own son or your own daughter, then you'll have to take another birth again if you are excessively attached to them. Or if you are very attached to your wife, you'll take birth as a female. Uh, if you're attached to your dog, you'll take birth as a dog. If you're attached to cat, you will take birth as a cat. Eh? So especially, um, we like to see our own son. We like to hear about our own son's glories. We don't want to hear uh, if, say, first prize. Uh, actually, I, I saw one news actually in India that there was um, there was actually two uh, boys or girl. I don't remember, but two girls actually, uh, and one girl. She came second in this class. She got the second rank. Another girl got the first rank. So, and perpetually this girl was getting the second rank. The other girl was getting the first rank. So the mother of that girl who was always getting the second rank became so envious that she literally eliminated the girl who was getting the first rank. I saw the newspaper actually. I was surprised. Envy can reach to any level. You may even try to physically eliminate your competitor, daughters, or son's competitor. So be very careful. Mm. We should not be, um, we should not try to be attached to so much to our child and, you know, hate someone else's child like that. Um, it is inappropriate to come under the influence of such attachment and aversion. This also happens many times in marriages, like woman gets married to another man and she has a child from the first marriage. Then many times that child from the first marriage is ill-treated by the new father. Understand? And that, that shouldn't happen. That shouldn't happen, actually. Uh, if she has new child from this man, then no harm. That man should look after all the children as his own children. Uh, actually, we should look upon all the animals also as our children. Shiva Dandi Maharaj once told me, I told him that I want to open Goshala in uh, Pune, uh, near Pune down. And then he said, why Goshala? Why not Prani Shala? He said, open a <laughs> shelter for all the animals, cat, dogs, hogs, pigs, everyone. They're all part and parcel of Krishna. And if we uh, if we get some Lakshmi, we'll open for all animals. Uh, that all animals should be given shelter there. They are all part and parcel of Krishna. So that is his vision, actually. He told me that all living entities uh, should be uh, seen as, uh, because uh, this is only a Mahabhagavat like Srila Gurudev or Shripad. Anirudh Prabhu or Shepat Dandi Maharaj can speak like this. They see Krishna in everyone's heart. Uh, they see uh, Krishna in the heart of every living entity. So that's why they don't want to hurt anyone and they look upon everyone equally. Mm. So um, 
it is inappropriate to come under the influence of such attachment and aversion. This has been explained. Sarartha Varshini Prakashika Vritti. The senses are of two types. Knowledge acquiring senses, Gyanendriya, and working senses, Karmendriya. There are five knowledge acquiring senses. The eyes, ears, nose, tongue, and skin, which accept form, sound, smell, taste, and touch as their respective objects of sense gratification. So eyes actually, <clears throat> they like to see a beautiful form. In India, that is happening too much now. These days, actually, they cheat you by the eyes. Uh, uh, they, they try to cheat you. They'll come to you and they'll tell you that this is, we are selling you gold. And then first they will give you the gold, which is genuine gold. And then after that, they will give you fake gold. And because you got genuine gold from them before, you'll trust them and then you'll purchase the new fake gold from them and lose the money. So eyes and ears, they're all deceptive. Mm. Nose is also deceptive, understand? So we like to smell uh, fragrance, uh, nose, and tongue. The tongue likes to taste, uh, the tongue likes to taste very palatable objects and skin likes to taste something very soft. Mm. So these are all sense gratification. Mm. So um, uh, very much actually many times you'll see that um, people like to purchase very soft clothes. When Brahmachari asked for a soft dhoti to Srila Bharti Maharaj, but Srila Bhakti Deita Madhav Goswami Maharaj told, don't give him very soft dhoti, give him little coarse dhoti, mm. uh, which is sold in the regulated shop, control shop in government. Uh, government India is to sell that. Uh. Why we should wear very soft dhotis, very soft saris, very expensive. Huh? Like many times you'll see that um, the rich persons, they have very handbags, huh? 50 lakh rupees, 1 crore rupees. Huh? So that, that, is, uh, that is how they, they, they have this, uh, this very, uh, what, what is use anyways? Uh, what is the use of having, uh, you know, um, 60,000 rupees US dollars uh, handbag, you know, what is the use, uh, uh, waste of time, what is the need of the clothes, uh, basically it is for sabhyata, dignity, just to cover your body, understand, so your bodily parts are not exposed, that's all, how does it matter that you are wearing, uh, you know, a very simple cloth or your very fabulous cloth, it doesn't matter, you should not waste time, Mm, on um, uh, procuring uh, very expensive clothes. Huh? <clears throat> uh, Vaishnavas should dress very simply. Mm. And um, <clears throat> and there are also five working senses. Speech, hands, legs, anus and genitals, which perform the action of speaking. So we speak by our... Uh, mouth but always speak the truth never speak untruth hands for accepting someone will give us something accept that many times i see that actually i go I, I, we are very fortunate sorry marjorie can't hear you and she was actually having only one hand. She was married actually and one boy uh, got married to her, devotee boy actually, devotee's son actually. Uh, so we are fortunate to have two hands, two legs. We should use them in Krishna's service, anus and genitals. Anus is for evacuation and genitals for, re uh, for reproduction. They are for reproduction or for evacuation uh, of urine and all that stuff. Uh, which perform the action of speaking, accepting, evacuating, and procreating. So procreation is also important. Uh, I am not telling that um, procreation is uh, genitals are bad. Uh, for example, today I got a news that my mother is sick. Uh, yesterday, my brother sent me WhatsApp message. Then. Uh, she has pneumonia. 
and we went to hospital so many days i told my sister who was taking care of her some remedies homeopathic remedies basically uh, when you have pneumonia then oxygen goes down so basically when oxygen goes down uh, there are some medicines in homeopathy which are much cheaper uh, like uh, carbo carbo wedge uh, this actually increases your uh, 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 blood this thing uh, um, carbo wedge is a very good medicine actually uh, and uh, coca erythroxyl if you take like two drops four times a day it increases your oxygen saturation in the body otherwise you know um, then my friend dr navin wadwa also gives a pattern and this and that so anyways uh, and the prayer obviously the prayer achyutaya nama anantaya govinda nama or name of krishna because adhe vyade yasya smaranat nama kirtana tade vilayam yanditta manantam namami you can also pray for uh, some of your relative who sick or suffering by giving them the benefit of ekadashi or chanting the holy name for their welfare and huh? the praying to lord nursing that is also good huh? ultimately it is in krishna's hand marabi rakhavi jyot ichha tohar nitya dasa prati tova adhika so basically we should be completely dependent on lord hari who is actually uh, so we should always chant his name like the four kumar also chanting hari sharanam hari sharanam this is their panchakshari mantra hari sharanam hari sharanam hari sharanam hari sharanam hari is a generic name it applies to narayan it applies to ram it applies to krishna hari means one of the deities huh? uh, narayan can also steal your mind ram can also steal your mind but krishna has taken the art of stealing to another level all together he steals the gold he steals the butter he steals the mind he steals the reputation he steals the money and he steals everything so um surdas has told that everyone may be hari narayan may be hari ram may be hari but he is hari rai is the best of the thieves <laughs> understand so he does not enjoy the various sense objects separately for himself in this way we, he can easily overpower the uncontrolled senses so basically he doesn't try to enjoy various sense objects separately for himself for example genitals they are for procreation if my mother my father would not procreate how would this poor soul get a chance to engage in krishna consciousness get initiated so i should not uh, i i shouldn't say that householders they're all bad they're all useless i uh, know my mother was also householder my father also householder i cannot repay them i can only repay them probably if i chant hari naam and follow ekadashi i can repay mother and father otherwise who which son in the world can repay the mother and father understand but if i behave badly if i steal uh, if i uh, try to um, you know engage in illicit sex with someone else's wife they will go to hell i will also go to hell but suppose i try to chant even little bit hari naam hmm. even little bit uh, they will be delivered at least uh, they will get a good destination i will also get a good destination uh, so really speaking um, uh, uh, procreation which happens by genitals is not essentially bad uh, recently what happened that china china has just banned the procreation they just said only one son then the whole population of china became um, lost no no population at all all old people were living in china so now they told that you can get, you can beget a child even with a woman who is your wife or not even your wife even if you are in living relationship that child is considered legal With that that the thing the things came to that actually. Now in India also we are seeing that uh, no sadhus, the temples are empty. Wherever we go, there are no devotees to do puja or to ring bell or to perform arti or to do book distribution or to edit books, translate books. No devotees, zero devotees. Big temples, but no devotees living there. This is because everyone has only one son, one daughter. they want to keep one son for their old age uh, will and daughter to marry someone so to someone else that's it and then they have no son left 
extra sons to engage in religious cause or national cause uh, like this uh, because government told that you have to have only one son and one daughter actually but if you are muslim then you are allowed to have marry four wives and you can have as many children as you like so some people are pressing that okay we should have equal law for muslims and hindus uh, hindus only one marriage and that to two children otherwise they will not get ration card they will not get a job this and that government put many restrictions but muslims no restrictions so the point i am trying to make is that i don't hate muslims or anything but what i am trying to say is that necessarily it is not necessary that children are bad thing uh, suppose you have 10 children also uh, the, the krishna will give food uh, and if krishna will arrange uh, suppose one mother I, I know one Mataji actually, she is a um, congregation member of Rup Sanatana Gaudiya Mat. She has two sons actually, Gaur and Nitai. They are very fair. If you look at them, they may look like American, I understand. Uh, and she dedicated both of them to <laughs> both of them to Rup Sanatana Gaudiya Mat. They used to went to normal school, but one teacher punished the child very much. So child became scared. And then they left the education for good, and now they live in the mud and they just do all the sevas, lot, bhajan, kirtan. Is there any shortage of prasadam in Rupsanath and Gaudiyamat or Ranganath Gaudiyamat? So much sabji. In Ranganath Gaudiyamat, truckload of sabji comes in Bhiksha. There is rooms full of the grains like ragi, um, so much bumper crop or shipa, the anyone also perfect, purchase a lot of grains. A lot of coconuts are there. Um, fresh milk from Indian breed of cow, A2 milk is there. Offered as prashadam, no shortage of prashadam actually. Uh, or clothes, so much, so many dhotis, so many shirts, they come as donation. I get so many clothes as donation actually. I cannot wear all of that, so I just uh, uh, give it to Maharaj who can distribute to the needy persons. I uh, understand. So once you surrender to Krishna, there is no shortage. Uh, so I wouldn't say that. <clears throat> If some mother say, takes it seriously and begets like say many children and gives it for propagation of Krishna consciousness, I, I would say that she's also doing some service by her genitals. Uh, I know it's very troublesome to beget a child. Uh, it's nine months to hold a child in the baby to raise him is like, you know, very Herculean task, very tough task. Uh, the toughest task I would say uh, in the world to rear a child. Uh, but that effort of a mother, all the blood, sweat and tears, as they call it, is is uh, is actually successful if the child becomes a good devotee. Uh, you know, yeah, at least he becomes a Kanishta Dikari. Still, something is better than nothing. Eh? He has actually, he will deliver at least three generations of the mothers. If he becomes Kanishta Dikari, if he becomes Madhya Dikari, he will deliver 21 generations of his mothers and 21 generations of his daughters. And if he becomes Uttama Dikari like Shila Gurudev or she, Anirudh Prabhu Jarshi, Padendi Maharaj, and he will deliver 100 generations. He or she, it doesn't matter. Understand? A woman will deliver her generations also. And so, and woman will deliver not only her, her relatives, she will deliver her husband's relatives also, in laws also, because they are one family. Understand? So, <clears throat> this is not possible without gross senses. So all the senses, speech, hands, legs, anus, genitals, uh, they can be used for Krishna's service. Um, uh, so in this way, we can easily, uh, I remember one devotee was there in uh, Badger, in the Gurudev's time, his name was Mahi Bharat Prabhu. <laughs> and he had many children actually. <laughs> Some of them are Kirtaniyas and these and their daughters and sons. And Srila Gurudev used to call him uh, Prajapati. Prajapati means progenitor. <laughs> he said, you are Prajapati. <laughs> um, and you know, there are some families, uh, there are some families that are like uh, in a temple, uh, joint families you now vanishing. But uh, I many times I go to the Osur temple. There is Srinidhi Prabhu's family, his brother's family, his sister's family, they are all devotees. His sons, grandsons, granddaughters of both brothers. So if any function is there, mostly the families only. <laughs> there are just two, two, three families and the, the hall is full. <laughs> the children are playing, running around with tilak, clapping, all that. So it's a devotee family, understand. Everyone is a devotee in the family. Eh? Also, I go to say Kopinath Bhavan in Bangalore. There is family of uh, 
babu the two babus there balram babu is also family devotee and also another babu so it's good they are all everyone devotee both the brothers are devotees the father kannapa shetty is also devotee his sisters also devotees sister sons also devotees everyone devotee there so when the program is there it's only the family of babu prabhu that is filling the whole hall <laughs> so all are related uh, so it's good huh? Uh, so that is how jyota se jyota jagaye chalo prema ki ganga bahate chalo that is simply uh, light up uh, one uh, one candle another candle another candle like that so spread the message so he does not enjoy the various sense objects separately for himself in this way he can easily overpower the uncontrolled senses and by engaging his controlled senses in the service of the lord he can attain the supreme goal of life so control your senses na bhakti vidan sai maharaj jis se dharma agirdh ho to isu kamos mein bhar tarsha i am the sex life krishna is telling that the sex life that is not opposed to religious principles is my vibhuti is my my manifestation or power understand so sex life which is not opposed to bhakti is also manifestation of krishna's opulence understand so shila bhakti no thakur quotes krishna is saying oh arjuna If you think that the jiva's acceptance of sense objects will make most of them more addicted to those sense objects, and as a result, liberation from the bondage of their religious duty karma will become impossible, then listen to my words. It is not true that all objects are detrimental to the spiritual progress of the jivas. It is only the jiva's attachment and aversion to the sense objects that are his greatest enemies. As long as you have this material body, you have to accept sense objects. Uh, for this reason, you should accept sense objects and at the same time control your attachment and aversion to them. Now, for example, today is Ekadashi. Yesterday also there was Kamada Ekadashi, but then the Maharaj told that two days you have to fast. So then, what we are looking for was some potatoes. Basically, potatoes is the staple food. It is easily available. It is very cost-effective, thirty rupees kilo. Another super food is ground nuts, which is a poor man's. We call it poor man's almonds. Huh? Uh, any dry fruit is very expensive, but ground nuts or peanuts, as they call them, they are very inexpensive. Huh? In India, even with the inflation we are experiencing, it may be hundred and fifty rupees kilo. Huh? I would say about two uh, dollars a kilo. We just boil it and put the rock salt on it. And it is ready. It's a very easy snack. You can offer it to Krishna on Ekadashi. You can accept that. Also, you can take, boil the potatoes, put uh, black pepper, uh, some ginger, and rock salt on it. It's also very tasty. Um, if you want some oil content, then in India, the best source of oil content is actually uh, coconuts. You grate the coconut and you put on top of that, and that's it. Your snack is ready. Ekadashi prasadam is ready. Offer it to Thakurji and accept that. Uh, it's change it's very cleansing uh, and it is also um, encourages autophagy in your body recycling of the dead cells uh, um, because um, cancer is spreading everywhere uh, everyone is now i got a news there is one mataji sudevi mataji she is disciple of shri gurudev married to kishori man prabhu uh, they are both are kirtaniyas actually shri gurudev's expert kirtan leaders um, she put a message that uh, yashoda nandan prabhu Uh, who has done a lot of service to Shri Guru Dev? Uh, he actually, uh, I heard that he has given a lot of donations to Shri Guru Dev's mission. Um, I think the same Yashoda Nand Prabhu is very. He's, I think is British. I, I have not spoken so much to him, but uh, um, he has cancer. I heard the news that he has cancer. Uh, um, so I talked to him on uh, WhatsApp actually, and. Uh, I said, what type of? And they were trying to do for, raise some funds for his treatment. What um, once Shripad Danti Mara sent me a video actually uh, about one person about cancer treatment. Uh, so he was speaking in Kannada, and I can understand some Kannada. And he was telling that I treat cancer. Uh, he was giving a lecture that I treat cancer. What level of cancer? The cancers has different levels, you know. First, second, third, fourth. Fourth means very difficult to cure. But he said, "I cure cancer at any level." Now, what type of cancer can I cure? He was asking. 
He said, I can cure the cancer of any level of any organ. It is liver cancer, kidney cancer, breast cancer, prostate cancer, uh, cancer, you name it, throat cancer, tongue cancer. Uh, cancer means basically uh, your own body uh, growing some uncontrolled cells. So he said, I control all this, all types of cancer. What medicine is giving? Then his medicine is telling that simply um, cow urine, wheat grass powder, or wheat grass juice, and some tulsi. Uh, tulsi, tulsi obviously is very holy, but he's giving some tulsi decoction, or maybe the juice of it, tulsi, uh, either ways. But natural cure. And he said, I cured. I can cure any cancer. What age group I can cure? He said, age group from two months old persons, two months old child to uh, 100 years. All age groups I can cure. But he is not using any chemicals. He is not using any chemotherapy, radiation therapy. No. He is giving this cow urine, the power of cow urine. Understand? So that's why uh, cow urine is so important. And uh, so he is giving these things. Uh, Shiba Tirtha Maharaj also once told me that. He said there is no cure for cancer. Only cure for cancer is a palm full of tulsi leaves. Just wash them, offer it to feet of Sri Krishna. And just prashadam tulsi. You should just eat palm full of tulsi. And uh, in here actually in Tirupati we get so much tulsi. For 10 or 15 rupees you will get an entire garland of tulsi leaves. To be offered to Tirupati. Uh, Govinda temple or Govinda Ash temple, Balaji temple, Varadio temple, everywhere they are selling tulsi. It's so inexpensive to purchase tulsi. They have special gardens and gardens, and they actually come running behind you. They say, Give, give 20 rupees, take this mala. They'll insist on and on. They'll not let you go. Mm. But uh, that is that tulsi garland, if you offer it to your Thakurji, let it stay on Thakurji all night. The morning time, Shripad Dandi Maharaj used to tell us that you just dry it up, powder it, and drink it with half with water, one half spoon of that powder. He said, so many problems will go away. And that's true, actually, because it is Prashari Tulsi. Uh, all the diseases come from sins only. Hatya Mantya Dangri Tulasi, Stayam Chatoyam Padu Naivetyam Bahu Madhya Paradaritam Gurvangana Sangajam, Shri Sadi Namati Stiti Harijane Tat Sangajam Kilvisham. Shalagrama Shila Nrasinga Mahima Kopisha Lokottara. Hmm. So basically, all the diseases they go away by chanting the holy name, accident Tulsi, Mahaprasad. So these are very powerful things, understand? So we should try to uh, take advantage of uh, this uh, natural cure. Uh, most of the diseases they are natural cure. Uh, why not? Why go for this expensive? Uh, Expensive treatments uh, uh, because I was speaking to one doctor and I, I told him that my mother has pneumonia. And he said they will only give strong antibiotics to your mother and then it will lead to multiple organ failure. She will have a kidney problem, this and that, and then they will try to this and that, and they somehow the other spoil the whole case. He said they cannot do anything, the allopath doctors, and they simply will just try to. Uh, uh, deteriorate the things. They cannot help. That's why when I met one girl on the auto when I was coming recently from Osur, uh, her name was Usha. So I said, what are you doing? She said, I am preparing for NEET. NEET is one medical entrance exam. Then I asked her that, you know, what are you aiming at? Are you trying to become an allopath or homeopath or an Ayurveda doctor? Then she said, I am trying to be an allopathy doctor. I said, why allopathy? Allopathy cannot cure any disease. It can only... It can only uh, uh, treat the symptoms, not the cause of it. But Ayurveda goes to the cause of it because it is Vedic knowledge. Shripad Dandi Maharaj also, he got uh, many devotees uh, registered in the Ayurveda course. Uh, like Balram Prabhu and another girl was from Tirupati. He instructed them, don't go for allopathy. Even if you get admission, don't go for it. He's a staunch supporter of Ayurveda. Mm. So, um, so as long as you have this material body, you have to accept sense objects. For this reason, you should accept sense objects and at the same time, control your attachment and aversion to them. If you act in this way, you can deal with sense objects without becoming bound to them. 
you will become detached from them by gradually eliminating the attachment and aversion that develops when one falsely identifies the body with the self. In brief, you will develop appropriate renunciation or yukta vairakya. I have not instructed you to substitute attachment to objects and activities related to me, Shri Bhagwan, or to those that stimulate one's bhakti, nor have I instructed you to not be averse to objects or activities that are obstacles to bhakti. Rather, I have only instructed to control the attachment and aversion that is related to selfish pleasures and that promotes a temperament that is opposed to bhakti. This should be understood. Hmm. So, verse 35 you, Shreyan so dharmo viguna, paradharma so nishtitat, so dharme nidhanam shreya paradharma bhava. Shreyan better, so dharma, one's prescribed duties. Viguna, slightly defective. Paradharma than others' duties. So anushtitat, perfectly performed. So dharme, in discharging one's prescribed duties. Nidhanam, death, shreya is better. Paradharma, duties prescribed for others, Ayavaha, bring danger. It is far better to execute one's prescribed duties, even though imperfect, in, imperfectly, than to perform others' duty perfectly. It is better to die discharging one's own duty in accordance with the Varnasham system than to engage in others' duty, for it is dangerous to follow another's path. For example, my duty. My duty as a sannyasi is to preach the glories of the holy name. But if I am trying to, say, doing software development or trying to find a full-time job in an office, no, that will not work. Now, as a sannyasi, uh, uh, we should, uh, following one is following Brahminical culture, Vaishnavism. His, his job is as a sannyasi, his job is to serve Sri Krishna. What is sannyas? Sannyas means to um by body, mind and tongue, dedicating all your senses to service of Krishna. This is real service. Understand. Kaina Vacha Manasilva Buddhat Manava Prakurti Savava. Karomi Vidya Sakalam Prasmi Narayanayati Savarpaya. Whatever I do by my body, tongue and mind, all my senses should be for the pleasure of Sri Krishna. This is my job as a sannyasi. Arjun was a Kshatriya, so his job was to fight. Kshatriya, he should not run away from the battlefield. He should face the enemy in the battlefield. He may die, but he should not run away. <clears throat> so, Sri Bhagwan sees that due to attachment and aversion, Arjun is becoming unable to engage in his own prescribed duty of fighting. So now, Sri Bhagwan is seeing that Arjuna is very much attached to his cousins. Uh, he is attached to his cousins. He is attached to Bhishma, whose uh, grandfather is Guru Dronacharya. And he has aversion for killing them. So he is not able to do his duty as a Kshatriya to fight. Instead, he considers it easier to engage in ahimsa, non violence, which is the duty of another Paratharma. Mm. So basically, he is trying to um, follow the path of non-violence. For example, in India, uh, there was Mr. Gandhi, Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi. He actually followed the path of Ahimsa. Uh, he, he said that he should not be violent. Uh, and basically, uh, Mahatma Gandhi, uh, he made a commentary on Bhagavad Gita to put forward his philosophy as non-violence. But to do that, it is rather difficult because Bhagavad Gita is taught on the battlefield. Krishna urging Arjuna to fight. The first verse begins: Sarmakshetre Kurukshetre Samaveta Yudso Mamaka Pandavasya Kimakurvata Sanjay. Kurukshetre is the place where the battle occurred. It is a place in India, and you have, you can go there even today. But Gandhi says that Kurukshetra means the body. Then the five Pandavas brothers are mentioned. Gandhi says that they represent the five senses. His idea, of course, is that the battle did not actually happen. But we take it from Krishna himself. That Kurukshetra is an actual place where a real battle was fought. This is called the direct meaning, in contrast to indirect meanings like Gandhi's. So basically, a lot of people, they have misinterpreted Gita. One of them is 
our Shri Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi. He actually took Bhagavad Gita, the, this Kurukshetra, to be an allegory. Or it is just an example. He said that it is just a allegorical. No, it is real. There is a battlefield. I went to Kurukshetra once at a time of solar eclipse. Lacks and lacks of sadhus were chanting mantra there. And, uh, you know, it is all real. Understand. Mm. So, um, non violence actually is for there, but it is not for Kshatriyas. Kshatriyas must engage in violence. Understand. For example, there are Pakistan soldiers, and uh, they are trying to intrude in the Indian boundary. And uh, Chinese soldiers also trying to in intrude into Indian boundary. What is the duty of Indian soldiers? It is their duty to protect the, to guard the, uh, the boundary of India. Because they are paid for that. They have a duty to, uh, and vice versa. Uh, Chinese soldiers also paid for guarding their, their, uh, their you know. Suppose uh, there is a person who is actually a security officer and a checking officer at um, say South African airport, say uh, Turban airport or you know Joburg, Johannesburg airport. He should diligently check all the luggages so that no narcotics are trafficked. Understand? Or no um, weapons are trafficked. He should diligently check the luggage. Many times they used to check my luggage. See, but Dandi Maharaj luggage like also. When we were traveling together and maybe Nairobi airport or maybe uh, Durban airport, and one, one security guard came and he said, oh, What is he? Why, what are we carrying? He said, Big bag. And we told them these are all puja items and we are in the monks and we are teaching the message of love and affection. So he was satisfied. He did, uh, otherwise, he could have, I think, in excess duty, he could have put on that. That is his job. He has to protect the interest of the country he belongs to. For example, if you go to Australia, they will check every single seed. You cannot bring any seed because they are afraid of contamination caused by the seeds. You can bring some dangerous, um, you know, notorious uh, seeds of some pest or some type of uh, um, shrub or some. Uh, uh, some dangerous uh, plant which grows at very fast rate. Now in India we see that there are the, all the water bodies are taken by some dangerous paste like um, plants, waterborne plants, and the land is taken over by grass as, as we call it. Um, it is actually a very dangerous type of uh, grass. Spreads everywhere, it gives you itching of and also nausea, also it gives you asthma. Understand? And then also there is so much land is taken by these eucalyptus trees which came from Australia. They always reduce the water level of the uh, water level at the of the land and you know cause so much problems. Understand. So what I'm trying to point I'm trying to make is that non-violence is there, but it is not for um, uh, so that's why um, Gandhiji, a great advocate of ahimsa or non-violence, found some of the Gita verses puzzling and disagreeable. Well, Krishna explained that killing can be perfectly religious and a form of yoga. Understand? One who is not motivated by false ego, whose intelligence is not entangled, though he kills men in the world, does not kill, nor is he bound by actions. Bhagavad Gita 18.17 Gandhi comments in his Anasakti Yoga. The meaning of these verses of Bhagavad Gita seems to depend on an imaginary ideal uh, which one cannot find uh, a practical example in this world. So here actually Gandhi couldn't understand Bhagavad Gita very well, uh, apparently, non-violence. But really speaking, Yadi madhumatana tat angri seva rodi vidhati jahati sa viviki tat akhilam api dushkrutam tri loke kurtam akurtam na kurtam kurtam jasar. Patyavali said states that if to satisfy Sri Krishna, one uh, commits all the sinful activities in the world, still he has not committed any sinful activity. And if one performs all the pious activities in the world but doesn't please Sri Krishna, then he has wasted his life. He will be is considered sinful. So Arjuna, although he may kill, he killed Dronacharya, Bhishma, Karna. He didn't get any sin because he was doing it on order of uh, Krishna. Hmm. Because 
Arjun and Bhima, their Krishna's left and right hand arms. Using them, he killed and eliminated the burden of the earth. They were all Kshatriyas, but they were actually demons disguised as Kshatriya kings. These unruly kings were a burden on the earth. So this whole Kurukshatra exercise, Krishna is using Arjuna's service to eliminate this unwanted population. Understand? Who are just the cancer. Suppose there is a doctor and he said, I will engage in non-violence. I will not do biopsy. I will not do autopsy. I will not do biopsy. I will not, I will not uh, do an operation because blood will flow. Then he is not a surgeon or a doctor. Because the surgeon and doctor, their most favorite instrument is a surgical knife. They take a uh, surgical uh, knife and that's it. Uh, chop, chop, chop. That's all they go. They go cutting, cutting, cutting. Uh, just that's all you have to do, actually. If you see any uh, operation, a belly or something, you'll see that. Uh, they just, uh, just like we open a watermelon, they cut the belly. Mm. Obviously, they are. Uh, they are cutting as a purpose because there may be a tumor growing, there may be an external object lodged there, something uh, or some serious ailment. If they don't cut, they stitch it back also later on. Uh, that gives pain to the patient, but doctors cannot be non-violent. They must commit some violence for the protection of the patient. So Bhagwan also has to tell Arjuna that you have to perform this himsa, but this is also service to me because this. This, as long as Duryodhan will remain, then there will be no peace on the earth and no one will be able to practice Krishna consciousness. So he has to go and you have to do that. So the word Viguna means that although the performance of one's prescribed duties may be defective and although one may be unable to execute it properly, it is still superior to performing the duties of another which may contain all good qualities and which one can execute correctly. Mm. For this reason, this verse Shreyan Swadharma is spoken. For example, I give an example that there is a mother. She is taking care of her children. So suppose some mother has five children and she has to cook every day for the children. She cannot afford any gas or anything, electric oven. So she has to go to the forest to cut the wood or maybe make cow dung patties. Obviously, when she burns the cow dung patties, so many insects die. When she cuts the wood, some trees also have to die. Understand? They also have sensation. So she is getting sinful reaction. But unless she will cut the wood, unless she will use the cow dung patties, um, she cannot cook. Her, her duty is imperfect because living entities are killed. When she boils the rice also, uh, so, uh, when she dehusks the paddy, then also so many living entities are dying. But she has to cook, otherwise what she will cook? If she will not dehusk the paddy, how will she feed her children? So her duty is imperfect, but it is okay. Because she must help her children survive. But then Bhagavad Gita, if she follows Bhagavad Gita, then if she studies Bhagavad Gita, then she can offer the food she has cooked to Krishna. And then Krishna will take away the sinful reaction in that food before offering it to her five or six children, that rice, uh, or dal, what she has cooked, she should offer it to Krishna. And then prasadam should be distributed. Yadne shishtasana santa muchyante sarva kilvishai gunjate to agham papa me pachyante to atma karanat. So, cooking for Krishna with love and affection, offering food to him will take away all the sinful reaction. So, it is said in Srimad Bhagavatam 7.15.12 Vidharma paradharmascha abhasa upamashchala Adharma shakha panchema dharma kyo dharma The tree of religion has five branches. Vidharma. Performing activities opposed to religion. There are some activities which are totally opposed to religion. For example, Muslims. <clears throat> they are actually um, killing cows. And now Bakrit will come. After Ramzan, Bakrit will come. And so many cows will be killed. Uh, but this is not dharma. This is vidharma. Uh, this is actually called a non-conformist religion. Uh, uh, so, um, activities opposed to dharma. Hmm. Paradharma. 
engaging in other religious principles, abhas, making a show of religious principles. Upama or Upadharma, practicing principles that only appear to be dharmic. And Chala Dharma, cheating Dharma, cheating religion. One who knows religious principles will abandon all of them as forbidden acts. So here actually, um, Shri Gurudev says in Manas Shiksha that um, according to the instructions of verse 1, one should perform bhajan after giving up all kinds of pride. In such condition, worldly life cannot be maintained. Shri Raghunath Das Goswami advises that dharma and adharma both be given up if one has to, to perform bhajan. In order to perform exclusive bhajan of Sri Sri Radha Krishna, one should abandon all kinds of dharma and adharma enjoyed in the Vedas, <clears throat> shruti's and other similar literatures. But by giving up one's daily and occasional duties, nitya and nemiti karma, life would become difficult and there would be several defects. Then what should we do? The activities that help us in the course of our life that are beneficial for this world as well as the next world are called dharma. To not follow this is adharma and to do what is contrary to this is called vidharma. We may not perform adharma, vidharma or kukarma, unbeneficial activity, but we have to follow dharma. In the shrutis, religious duties are divided according to karma, fruity activity, jnana, the cultivation of knowledge aimed at impersonal liberation, and bhakti, devotion unto the Supreme Lord. Tavat karmani kurvita na nirvidyata yavata. Until one awakens detachment from the results of fruity activity or until one develops faith in hearing discourse related to me, one must carry out his daily and occasional obligatory activities. So basically, <clears throat> there are certain obligations. Someone, suppose someone is married and then he has children. <clears throat> then he has to earn for the children because he has taken the vow and now he has to unless he has developed very great attachment for hearing past times of Sri Krishna and be willing to chant 24 hours a day that person should not forsake his household life for his duties he should keep on doing his job he should go to that job regularly earn some money and use that money for maintaining his wife and children but at the same time that person should chant the name of God whether he is traveling, commuting, whether he is in office, whether he is doing household activities, you should keep on chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, or Ram Krishna Hari, or Hari Sharanam, Sri Ram Jai Ram Jai, any name of God, Narayan Narayan, or Krishna Krishna, uh, Govinda Govinda, some name of God should be always chanted. Uh, understand? So, <clears throat> the Vedas say Ahinsa Paramo Dharma, the non violence is the highest religious principle. Pitru Deva Bhava, Matru Deva Bhava. Respect your elders and parents. Atiti Deva Bhava. Respect those who are uninvited guests at your home. And Acharya Deva Bhava. Respect your teachers and preceptors. In ordinary day-to-day -day life, these cannot be abandoned. You will have to take care of your mother and father. Unless you are a sannyasi or brahmachari, you are in householder life, then you must take care of your mother and father. One should not be violent to other living entities. Like Gurudev says, cows are the mothers and sheep and goats, they are also small mothers. We should not eat their meat also. Atiti mm. Devo, if any guest will come, even if he is your enemy, you should greet him nicely, offer him water, place to sit and take care of that guest. Now this is decreasing, in the, especially in cities, accommodation is very less. But at least, to whatever extent we can help a guest, we should help. Um, don't forget, one day you'll also have to be a guest at someone else's house, you know. I, I, I see that in many situations. Huh? <clears throat> like, for example, there was a Kadashi Prasadam today. In our preaching center, Mr. Mr. Raja came. Ramanjali Prabhu came. And then others came. And then they honored Prasad at the preaching center. And sometimes we have to go to their place. They give us nice prasadam. And we do kirtan. So it is reciprocation. Dadati prati gunanati guya makhyati puchati. 
Bhungte bhojayate chayava shadavidhi prati lakshanam. If anyone will come, then he should be given prashadam. Guests should not be sent empty-handed. If there is nothing to offer, at least you can give him some, at least one sweet water, one glass, and some sweet words. That doesn't cost any money. But try to respect the guest, at least, to, to whatever ability you have, economic ability you have. No good karma results in eternal happiness, and the ultimate outcome will be suffering. One gets married for happiness, but it turns out to be painful. Understand? So here it is told that you, no one gets married for unhappiness. But actually it turns out to be painful. Accumulation of wealth also results in suffering. So you see that in India we many times see a girl will get married with great effort to a man. But then when the day that she gets married, they are only harassing her for dowry. Bring us a motorcycle, bring us a new television, bring us a new car. Your husband is going to start a job, uh, he's going to start a business, bring the capital. Uh, this and that, your dowry, your father gave was not enough. From day one, she's tortured. Better that she would not have got married. <laughs> you know, and then within 10 or 12 days, they just use a pillow, suffocate her and kill her. This is going on in India. So many incidences. So, so why she got married? She, wanted, she thought that she will get a husband and she'll be happy. It turned out to death. Accumulation of wealth also results in suffering. If you have a lot of wealth, then there are so many swindlers. They'll come to you and they will simply... Uh, now there are umpteen number of ways. of the misery of material activity. Uh, karmani chetani nirveda krita. So when we develop detachment, uh, when we become aware of the misery of the material activity, Draupadi and the Pandavas were fully surrendered to Krishna and yet even they underwent great suffering. I will see that the Pandavas suffering and Draupadi suffering, even the worst enemy of mine should not suffer like them. Mm. Uh, they, they had to leave their kingdom. Draupadi was being, well, they attempted to strip her naked. Uh, <clears throat> Jayadra tried to kidnap her. And Pandavas, Bhima was tried, they tried to poison him. They tried to burn their house. Uh, they, so many atrocities. Their, own, their five children were, were butchered <clears throat> by Krutavarma. Um, even the was in the womb of um, Uttara, was they were trying to get rid of Ashwatthama. King Harishchandra followed the path of Dharma, yet he had to suffer. If one comes to this understanding that karma and fruits of karma result in suffering only, then he becomes eligible for jnana. But even the elaborate commentaries on jnana given in the scriptures not control contain real happiness because there is no acceptance of Bhagavan. So, jnana prayasa mudapasa nemanta veva jivanti sanmukaritam bhavadiya vartha sthane sthitva shutikatam tanuvang manodir prayashe jitopitesa pokya. Impersonal knowledge has no conception of Bhagavan. So, better to hear Harikatha. That is superior to anushilan of jnana. Hmm. So, activities such as non-violence are prescribed for brahmanas who are situated in the material mode of goodness or sattva guna. For kshatriyas who are in mode of passion or rajaguna the prescribed duty is fighting. <clears throat> For example, there were actually Sikh religions. Sikh religion was actually when in Kashmir, they were simply killing the Brahmanas, left, right and center, chop, 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 kill, kill, kill. That was going on Muslims. Uh, so that's from Guru Tegh Bahadur. Uh, he actually, uh, in order to uh, protect this sacred thread of the Brahmanas in Kashmir, he started the Sikh religion. Uh, uh, he was uh, one of the founders of the Sikh religion. Understand? Um, he was born in April 1621. Uh, 
he was the ninth of the ten gurus who founded the Sikh religion. And uh, <clears throat> so Sikh means actually word come from Sikh, Sikh Shishya. Huh? So they did a lot of sacrifice. Arjun Singh, Guru Tegh Bahadur Singh. I don't know that too much of their history. But what I heard from Srila Gurudev, that they fought diligently uh, against Mughals, the Muslim rulers. Uh. So these Sikh Gurus are highly revered. Uh. So Kshatriya's job is to fight. <clears throat> they must fight. Uh, to especially protect the Brahman class. To women, children. For Kshatriyas who are in a mode of passion, or Rajagund, the prescribed duty is fighting. Therefore, the prescribed duty for Kshatriya is to engage in battle. Even if a Kshatriya dies in a battle, he attains the heavenly planets. Therefore, it is better for him to fight. Now, Kshatriyas, the Brahmana, were not allowed two marriages. That is sense gratification. Brahman should not be in mode of passion and doing sense gratification. But rather, <clears throat> the Brahmanas uh, should not engage in sense gratification. Uh, Kshatriyas are allowed some sense gratification because they have to face uh, violence, so much violence they have to see. So sometimes Kshatriyas are allowed maybe one one queen, two queens like that. Uh, for example, Dashat Maharaj was a Kshatriya. He had, uh, obviously, is a transcendental personality. He had 360 queens. Uh, Yayati also married Sharmish Thadevani like this. Uh. Each of the Pandavas also had one or two queens, uh, two queens, I think, each one of them. Uh, either way. Uh. Srila Bhaktinath Thakur says, one who executes his prescribed duties may die before attaining a more elevated qualification. Still his performance of them is auspicious because to perform the duties of another is always fearful and dangerous in any circumstance. So Arjun knows that he may die. He may not, the Karana's very powerful arrow may come and kill him. And he may not get victory also. But still Arjun, nothing should be afraid because even if Karana's arrow kills him, or Bhishma's arrow kills him, or Dronacharya's arrow kills him, he will go to the heavenly planet. Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur says that Dharma means the jiva's eternal function. In that stage, one's previous sadharma, which was related to the, the mind, becomes paradharma. That is belonging to another, and it is secondary to the duties of the other constructs. Devarshi Bhutatam Nanam King, Nitranam Pitranam King, Nakin Karo Nayam Rodin Chirat, Sarvat Manaya Sharanam Sharanam, Gapa Mukundam Parivat Takarta. Those who have taken exclusive shelter of Shri Mukund who is the only shelter and who had renounced all varieties of karma, no longer remain indebted to God's sages, living entities, saintly persons and forefathers. Sometimes um, demigods become upset with us. We don't worship them with the Prajavasis. Sometimes sages may become upset with you if you don't serve them. Other living entities also may be harmed if you don't serve them. Saintly persons also. We are indebted to them. If we don't serve them, it's an offense. Forefathers also, we are indebted to them. If we don't serve them, we are offense. What we are enjoying is actually Harris. What we are enjoying is nothing but the wealth of forefathers. His body is also given by our father or mother. So we are indebted to them. But once you start doing Krishna Bhakti, then Krishna will free you from that debt. Krishna will free you from that. Um, uh, their burden of their debt. Understand? Because once Yasmin Tushte Jagat Tushte, if you satisfy Krishna, then demigods are also satisfied. Uh, so one time there was actually one particular king and one Brahman from Pandarpur went to that king. So king was worshipping Parvati on very opulent scale with ornaments and all. <clears throat> And great paraphernalia. He had a temple of two par temples for Parvati. He asked the Brahman from Pandarpur that you are Vithal, you are Krishna. 
does he have such opulent temple? Then that Brahman said, yes, our temple is made of gold and Pandarpur is made of touchstone, philosopher's stones, uh, touchstones, philosopher's stones, desired stones, desired trees, um, Ramadhyana, milch cows, wish fulfilling cows, wish, wish fulfilling trees. King wanted to see Pandarpur. So he brought the Brahman with him. And then Brahman prayed to Lord Krishna that I glorified Pandarpur. That is full of wishes with wish fulfilling gems and wish fulfilling trees and cows. Can you please show that type of Pandarpur to my to this king? And then Krishna showed that vision to the king. King saw everywhere there were actually Chintamani, Kamadhenu, Skalpa Vrikshas. And he offered Dandot Pranams to Vithala. And he saw that Parvati was sweeping the courtyard there. He said, Parvati, you are my worshipable deity. I worship you on a very grand scale. <clears throat> that king's name was Ramraj. He told <clears throat> that I worship you on a grand scale in my kingdom Vijayanagar. And you are sweeping the courtyard here. Why you are doing this, mother? And she said that I am one of the millions of the millions of maidservants of Vithala. Uh, I am simply an ordinary maidservant of Vithala. Then he offered Dandar Pranam to Vithala and he said, I want to be... I wanted you come with me. You come to my kingdom. And then Vittal left with him from Pandarpur. He went to Vijayanagar. But people in the devotees in Pandarpur were very agitated that Vittal left Pandarpur. So they sent one great devotee, Bhanudas. So Bhanudas secretly found where the king had placed Vittal deity. And he went and offered obeisances to Vittal. Then king caught him, and, uh, and Vittal also gave him some ornament as a gift to Panudas, when he secretly had darshan of him. But when the king's soldiers caught Panudas, because they accused him of stealing an ornament of Vithal, and they wanted to hang him, and they got a big staff um, from, um, from the stem of a mango tree, and they planted it in the ground, dry mango tree. <clears throat> and they planted it, and they wanted to hang him using that. Huh? But as soon as they planted that dry stem of a mango tree, it immediately sprouted into many leaves. Mangoes appeared there, and they couldn't hang him. So then Vittal told the king that, I had told you that when I come to your kingdom from Pandarpur, if you commit any offense in a devotee, I will, leave I will go back to Pandarpur. You have offended a great devotee by the name Bharudas by trying to hang him. So I am now living. And then Bharadas carried this deed of Vithar all the way from Vijayanagar, maybe in Andhra Pradesh to Maharashtra. So Bharadas is responsible for bringing the deity of Vithar back to Pandarpur from Vijayanagar. <clears throat> so, those who have taken exclusive shelter of Sri Govinda, who is the only shelter and who have renounced all varieties of karma, no longer indebted to the demigods, sages, living entities, saintly persons, and forefathers. One who has not become fully detached from enjoying the fruits of his activities, karma, and whose faith in the process of bhakti and the hearing of my pastime is not yet sufficiently developed, must certainly engage in his prescribed duties. The devotees of Bhagwan, the renounced, the renunciants, on the other hand, have no purpose to achieve by engaging in karma. <clears throat> So basically, sannyasis and those who are devotees of Bhagavan, they should not engage in any mundane karma. They should simply engage in hearing, chanting, remembering, and depend and 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 just subsist somehow or other, whatever clothes and whatever food Krishna gives them. Understand? Sometimes it may be very palatable food, and sometimes it may be very simple prashadam, no harm. Uh, one should not try to be a sense gratifier, eat a lot of ghee, a lot of delicious prashadam, pizza, pasta, lasagna, cheesecake, ice cream. Uh, no, whatever simply Kichadi, you know, once Shiva Dandi Maharaj told me, oh, you should go to Muhas and open a temple there in Hanuman's. It's a mystical Hanuman temple where um, if your bone is broken, it immediately gets joined there. Especially those who have orthopedic problems, fractures and all, they're cured there. So a lot of pilgrims come there on Saturday and, and uh, Tuesday. So Maharaj said, why not open a preaching center there? But he said, I said, what will I eat there? He said, you cook some khichadi. You take a pressure cooker and simply cook simple khichadi like Swami Maharaj was cooking. 
and you just preached it. And I like that idea. Mm-hmm. And, you know, maybe if I get some room there, I definitely want to preach there. Uh-huh. Because you see that uh, simple living, high thinking, that is our motto. Mm-hmm. We are very simple clothes, very simple clothes. And honor very simple prasadam. Mm-hmm. Uh, and just chant and hear and glorify Krishna. Tell people, people are in so much ignorance. Uh, they don't know anything about Krishna. Mm-hmm. Just tell them about Krishna. Mm-hmm. So that's why. Huh? Swadharmo Shriyan Swadharmo Biguna. Paradharma Sunashtita. Swadharmi Nidana Mishriya. Paradharma Bhagavan. Uh, Shriyan for better Swadharma, one's prescribed duties. Biguna, even faulty Paradharma. And duty is mentioned for others. So anushtita. Perfectly done. So dharma in one's prescribed duties. Dhidana destruction. Shreya better. Kura dharma. Duty is prescribed for others. Bhayavaha. Dangerous. It is far better to discharge one's prescribed duties. Even though they may be faulty than others' duties. Destruction in the course of performing one's own duty is better than engaging in others' duties. Or to follow other paths. Others' path is dangerous. One should therefore discharge his prescribed duties in full Krishna consciousness rather than those prescribed for others. Prescribed duties complement one's psychophysical condition under spell of the modes of material nature. Like Srila Gurudev, after he took sannyas, he never wore trousers. He never wore creepy suit. Mm. Always in dhoti. Any country he went, he went in simple sannyasi dhoti. He never worked outside. He never collected money, he never ate opulent food, he never slept on opulent beds. <clears throat> he always chanted 1 lakh, 2 lakh, 3 lakh holy names. Uh, like Shri Gurudev, Shri Anirut Prabhu, Shri Patandi Maharaj. They are perfect examples that they never engaged in any sense gratification. And they never tried to collect over endeavor for money. Only chanting holy name uh, and engaging all the money they got for service of Sri Krishna and devotees. So spiritual duties are as ordered by the spiritual master for the transcendental service of Krishna. But both materially or spiritually, one should stick to his prescribed duties even up to death, rather than imitate others' prescribed duties. <laughs> so suppose you are a doctor, <clears throat> then you should act like a good doctor. <clears throat> Don't perform abortion. And if a poor patient comes to you, you should do free of charge surgery or treatment. Uh, you have taken a vow. And what is that wow called? Of Hippocrates or something. Wow. Uh, so, as a medicinal practitioner, uh, you should not take kickbacks or bribe. Now, that is what is going on these days. Uh, there is actually recently in Delhi, a very famous hospital, they caught one um, ring of doctors who were taking kickbacks and uh, bribes for doing expensive surgeries. Government is providing all the instruments, all the paraphernalia, all the types of uh, apparatus and all the medicines free of charge. Why not perform free of charge? Why you have to take kickbacks? You are paid also handsome salary by the government. So a doctor should not do corruption. He should try to um, serve the humanity at large. If you are an engineer, then don't do corruption in um, building a bridge. Uh, otherwise, you are compromising so many lives. Suppose I am a civil engineer, then I must try to build a bridge which will last for decades. Uh, not that uh, even before inauguration, the bridge has collapsed. Uh, this has happened in India. Even before the inauguration, the bridge collapsed. You can imagine what would have happened if already the traffic and through fare would have started. If as an electrician, don't use substandard electrical equipment. Otherwise, there is a risk of fire. The whole building may be burnt. Understand? <clears throat> So basically, um, corruption in any area, uh, you are compromising lives. Uh, suppose you are a pharmacist, don't use adulterated medicines. Uh, use pure medicines. Uh, don't Adulteration is not good. So when one is under the spell of modes of material nature, one should follow the prescribed rules for particular situations and should not imitate others. For example, a Brahmana who is in the mode of goodness is non-violent. Where the Kshatriya who is in the mode of passion is allowed to be violent. As such, for a Kshatriya, it is better to be vanquished following the rules of violence than to imitate a Brahmana who follows the principles of non violence. 
Everyone has to cleanse his heart by a gradual process, not abruptly. Like for example, a grasta, he should not do bhiksha. To do bhiksha is the job of sannyasi. A grasta can also do bhiksha if he's no job and he's living a brahminical life, huh? simply studying Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavatam. Then like Arjun Mishra, they are entitled to do bhiksha. But otherwise, um, others are not ent entitled to do bhiksha. Viksha is only meant for sannyasis and brahmacharis and brahmanas. Hmm. However, when one transcends the modes of material nature or is fully situated in Krishna consciousness, he can perform anything and everything under the direction of the bona fide spiritual master. In that complete stage of Krishna consciousness, the kshatriya may act as a brahmana or a brahmana may act as a kshatriya. Hmm. Now, this is very common. <clears throat> because uh, Parshuram, for example, he acted as a Kshatriya, although he was born in a Brahmin family. Mm. Mm. It is perfectly fine that a Brahmana, someone, someone is having second initiation in Krishna consciousness, he has become a Vaishnava, and he acts like a security guard. The example is Mr. Rajesh Gaur. Mr. Rajesh Gaur is a disciple of Srila Bhaktidan Vaman Goswami Maharaj, and uh, he also served our Gurudev. Now, when Navadhi Parikrama was going on, there are a lot of pickpockets, a lot of times, chain snatchers, they are wandering around. So, he is retired now, maybe Rajesh Gaur, he was a police officer. And uh, he sits there at the gate and guarding. Uh, he doesn't attend classes that time. But in his uniform of police, he sits there. So, yeah. he clamps, uh, puts a clamp on the keys and ropes. Uh, and antisocial elements who flock our... Um, Parikrama party because there are so many Westerners and so many persons from women from other states who are having golden chains. Huh? But Navadhi Parikrama was previously notorious, especially um, <clears throat> Champahati, you know, so much uh, money was being stolen actually. But so some devotees have to act like security guards, understand? That it, they, they should follow their duty. Huh? So, so, um, so Vishwamitra was. Originally a Kshatriya, but later on he acted as a Brahmana. Whereas Parshuram was a Brahmana, but later on he acted as a Kshatriya. So Vishwamitra, once Shipad Dandi Maharaj told me the story of Vishwamitra, how he was a Rushi. He was a Raja Rishri, Raja Rushi. He was a king and a sage. Huh? Uh, sage in a king's disguise. But later on he was promoted to become a Rushi. Then he was even more promoted to be a Maharshi. And finally he was promoted to become a Brahmarshi. Hmm? Uh, so, although Vishwamitra was a Kshatriya, he acted like a Brahmana. And Parshuram was a Brahmana, but later on he acted as a Kshatriya. So, being transcendentally situated, they could do so. But as long as one is on the material platform, he must perform his duties according to the modes of material nature. So, Brahmana should be in the mode of goodness. Uh, and Kshatriya has to be in the mode of passion. Understand? At the same time, he must have a full sense to of Krishna consciousness. So, suppose in a mercantile class, the mercantile class may be some mixture of passion and ignorance, and Shudra's work may be a mode of ignorance. But it doesn't matter. <laughs> suppose I am cleaning toilets in a temple. I just take a scrub and some mild hydrochloric acid, and I just go to and five or ten toilets are there. And yellowish tinge is appearing there, and I just go and scrub them nicely, pour water nicely. So by telling us, uh, uh, will not feel, uh, will not get the stench when they enter the toilet. Uh, I am actually doing the work, a very actually, uh, not very uh, high class work. One would say like this, but actually it is very high class because you are not acting on the platform of bodily consciousness. Uh, you are not thinking I am doing shudra job, but rather it is looked at. These Vaishnavas are so great, they have dedicated their lives for Sri Krishna. So I am doing that service so that they will um, not feel any inconvenience when they use the toilets. With that mood, if I do, I will advance in bhakti. Understand? Suppose my Gurudev is very sick and he has diarrhea. And um, somehow I am cleaning his dhotis. Huh? Uh, um, you know, um, because my Gurudev has loose motion. Uh, it, that's okay. That is okay because Krishna will be pleased by that. Siddhir Bhavati Vaneti Samusha Achyuta Sevana 
निश्चस्तु तद भक्त परिचर्या रथात्मान इफ यू सर कृष्ण यू मे और मे नॉट गेट परफेक्शन बट इफ यू सर यूर गुरुदेव एंड सर कृष्ण आज कृष्ण डिवोटीज यू सटनली गेट परफेक्शन सो यू सी दैट ईश्वर पुरी ऑल्सो एंगेज इन मिनियल सर्विस सो एट द लास्ट स्टेज ऑफ हिज लाइफ श्री माधवेंद्र पुरी बिकेम एन इनवैलिड एंड वॉज कंप्लीटली अनेबल टू मूव एंड ईश्वर पुरी सो कंप्लीटली एंगेज हिमसेल्फ इन हिज सर्विस दैट ही पर्सनली क्लीन अप हिज स्टूल एंड यूरिन always chanting the hare krishna mahamantra and reminding shri madhavendra puri about the past times of lord krishna in the last stage of his life ishwar puri gave the best service among his disciples thus madhavendra puri being very pleased with him blessed him saying my dear boy i can only pray to krishna that he will be pleased with you so ishwar puri by the grace of his spiritual master shri madhavendra puri became a great devotee in the ocean of love of god shri vishnachar thakur states in his gurvashtakam prayer भक्ति सो ईश्वर पुरी He did that seva to Madhavendra Puri, so that is the thing. Uh, so uh, we should not hesitate to do our duty. Uh, don't uh, don't hesitate. Whatever prescribed duty, what Guru Dev has told us, uh, we should try to do that. Um, even if it may seem difficult sometimes. Oh, uh, why I have to do that? Uh, no, don't feel any problem. Whatever Guru Dev says, uh, we should try to do that. Even if we are not able to do it perfectly, like one time Shri Guru Dev told me that um, you have to translate Bhagavad Bhagavata Amritam. I was not very good at English, nor I was good at Sanskrit translation. But then I said, Guru Dev's order is there. I have no choice. I must do it. Then I slowly, slowly picked up the art and science of translation. I learned my English also improved, and I benefited. I came to know some Siddhanta also. So, Guru, if I had told Guru Dev that Prat Bhagavata Amrit is a very big book, and I will not be able to do that, then Guru Dev said, "All right, so we will appoint someone else to translate it." But both the volumes I translated it, uh, and then I learned from that. I benefited from that, and the Hesargatta Ashram was very peaceful. My room was near Goshala, so no one was disturbing me there. And days and days I was translating there. morning and evening i would translate it time i would go and distribute books at railway station it was a very peaceful life uh, very fresh air nice cows so the point i am trying to say is that when we try to serve gurudev follow his order we benefit we learn so many things so many things if sipa dandi maharaj gives us some task if i try to follow that i learn something there is lot of learning is there so benefit comes by that mm. Uh, bhakti will also come so we try to follow the orders of guru and vaishnavas uh, and um, give up our false ego uh, then we'll benefit so today is uh, venjali mahadvadashi it was a little long class thank you so much uh, hare krishna hari bol vancha kalpatr vaishnav krupa sindhu pradana bhavane vi vaishnav mandalas hari hari krishna then the word prams thank you so much so what page did we stop at actually it was um, I would tell you that um, it is verse number three thirty-five is finished. Huh? Um, mm-hmm. This particular verse um, is um, now we'll begin from just three thirty-six. Okay, three point thirty-six. Okay, chapter, chapter three, three. three, verse number thirty-six. Arjuna vacha atakiena prayukto yam papan charati purusha anich apivarshneya balad even yojita. That why a person commits sins. Now this is the question that Arjun will ask in next class. We'll discuss that. What causes a person to commit sinful activity? Hmm. So hmm. that is a question, and Krishna will give an answer to that. There are certain questions in this Bhagavad Gita, and Krishna is trying to answer them. Huh? So three thirty six very important question. Hmm. That what is the root cause of sin? Uh, why people are committing sin? Huh? Because you see that uh, people getting punished left, right, and center. 
people are suffering from life life imprisonment uh, for this crime for that crime uh, for whatever it is <clears throat> they are long sentences in the prisons yeah yeah so what what is caused them to sin this is a question we say what, what is the root cause of the sin where the sin come from uh, so then that that's very very important uh, we have to know that krishna will tell actually that kama the sex desire kama lust alone is the source kama is krodhe rajoguna samadva mahashuma mahapapa vidinam yavirana that's why it is very very important this to study this particular scripture bhagavad gita because we come to know exactly what is our disease diagnosis or prognosis as they call it it is very very important if you cannot diagnose the disease properly then what treatment can be done so basically diagnosis so krishna is a here is a krishna is a doctor he is giving us this diagnosis what problem we are suffering from hari krishna then us Mm, Maharaj, this is when you listen to this whole thing. Oh, it calls for complete surrender. Yes, Sharana Gati, Saranga Sharana Gati, Hai Be Jahar, Tahar Prathana Shune Shri Nanda Kumar. We have to surrender. So surrender is actually mm. the solution to all the problems. Yeah. Karana Manasa Kira. We have I to surrender see. to Krishna. Because If you are uh, surrender, you can never understand anything what you said there. Right, right, right. Exactly, exactly. Hari Bo, Hari Bo. Hey Krishna, my friend, what problems? Thank you so Hello. much. Hey, thank you so much. Hari Krishna, Hari. Thank you so much. Thank you. So tomorrow I have a train, but it is late yeah. in the night. So tomorrow mm-hmm. there will be class. I think on Madhuri Kadambi, right? Monday. Yeah, it was Monday. And then I will reach. Uh, I will reach, and I think day after tomorrow, I think I should be okay to conduct an online.